What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I am your host, Kieran Anderson, and we have Chris Hopkins on with us. Chris, how are you? Haven't talked to you in a bit. Good to see you. What's happening, my man? Honestly, I'm just trying not to sweat <laughs> right now. Texas is one of the hottest places in the world right now. I saw that on the news. What? There's some kind of heat dome sitting over us. It's 100 degrees. Everywhere. 100% humidity. It's, it's oh, pretty gosh. brutal out. You, are you just blasting your AC right now? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I get those emails that say, hey, try to conserve your AC. Yeah. Um, but no, we're, 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 we're trying to keep it cool. Here. <laughs> hey, Chris, give, uh, gr- give the listeners uh, just an overview on yourself, where you're from, what you do, um, and then how long have you been a part of Salt Life? Yeah, so I am Chris Hopkins. I live in Texas. So I am a, uh, a surfer here in Texas. I live in Galveston, which is like a little barrier island off the coast of Texas. So, I mean, if you're not familiar with, with, with surfing and, and Texas, you know, as, as one, you know, that's probably the last thing you, you usually think about Yeah, are, is, is, you know, the little islands off the coast of Texas. So um, grew up here, you know, a mile from the beach. My dad was always a surfer, so, you know, naturally started surfing when I was young and uh, just kind of went from there. I've been with Salt Live since last September, so I'm, I'm still I'm still the new guy, I guess. I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> That's sick. I love that. It's It's been a good run. It's been a good run. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, and yeah, so, yeah, looking forward to just diving into, you know, all things – surfing in texas today i know it's going to be an interesting one um for everybody listening and i was just talking to chris for like 30 seconds before this i was like i was just looking at houses over there in texas because it looks so rad dude and you guys have warm weather warm water like good fishing you have everything out there to live the salt life and it's really interesting to me that there are waves there and the waves can get probably super good with like good windswell and stuff like there's opportunity there just like there is everywhere else in the world but um so you've lived there your whole life then? Yep. Born and raised. Absolutely. And did you grow up surfing? Was that like something that was like involved in your life? You said that you were so close to the beach. Like was there a bunch of groms at the beach every day? There's not a ton of groms at the beach. That's the one thing we're missing around here. You know, that there are kids that surf, but there aren't like packs of them running around, at least in yeah. Galveston. In the Corpus Christi area, they have a good little pack of groms right now, but um, so when I was growing up, my dad always surfed and he did competitions and, uh, he was a U.S. champion back in the day. Um, so it was, yeah, it was just a part of the life. I would jump in the back of the truck with all the boys and, and cruise down to a surf contest and, um, sleep on the floor in the hotel all weekend. And just, I was just a part of the crew. So that's epic. yeah, he, he started me young. So when you guys get a swell, how many guys are in the water? Oh man. Uh, you know, there were some days this past year where like, there'd be like 30 guys in the water. Um, Galveston's kind of unique. We have like three piers you can, you can surf at. Yeah. And we have a lot, a lot of shorter, like rock jetties that you can also surf at, but, um, everybody's been gravitating to those, to those piers. Uh, they've just been breaking a lot better. Uh, the city keeps dumping sand on the beach for, you know, beach replenishment for the tourism and things like that. And it's kind of ruined the surf at all the jetties, unfortunately. So usually a lot of those people are spread out, uh, but they seem to make their way to the same spot lately. <laughs> super, super interesting question for you. So I like using okay. my jet ski. That's like a tool to my surfing. Um, you can drive on the beach in Texas, right? Uh, in parts, not everywhere, but yeah, there are areas where you can drive. Can you put a jet ski in the water at the beach? Yeah. And would yeah, like absolutely. doing step offs, like jumping off into the waves on your board with a jet ski and stuff. You would can you, for sure. They would be chill with that. Yeah. yeah. That's sick. Oh yeah. That's sure. epic. I mean, you, they, they rent jet skis yeah. off, off the beach, you know? So. Oh, okay. Sweet. Yeah. yeah I never knew that. The, so the only, the only challenge there is that we get a lot of choppy conditions. Yeah. I'm, so that's the only thing you have to navigate there. Totally. So how often are you getting good swells? Man, we just came off of like a great, like probably six month stretch from like November to April. Um, we were getting surf every single week, a few days a week, good, clean conditions. Um, and now that summer is hit, it, it's gone kind of flat. So it's like knee, maybe thigh high at times. So we need to ride a bigger board. 
But during that stretch of fall into the spring, the water does dip down at times. It'll get into the 50s, depending on the weather patterns, but, but it's, it's not terrible. But, you know, we had several days that were head high, good, clean conditions, um, you know, with a ton of people in the water. But we scored this past season. And it's all beach breaks, yeah? You don't have any reef breaks? All beach breaks. All beach That's breaks. That's epic. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you, guys, you guys go tube hunting out there, try to get some barrels? Oh, for sure. There's some, there's some areas of the coastline that are kind of untouched. There's just yeah. not very populated. And so you can definitely take some, some missions down that way and just a little deeper water, more defined sandbars and definitely go tube hunting places like that. Realistically, how consistent is it surfing in Texas? Cause I mean, like for me, I can get off work in the morning and I can just go surf. Like it, all, we always have waves. If it's half a foot or five foot, like California always has waves. Um, how is it in Texas? Oh man. Um, like in the summer, I haven't surfed in, in a few weeks, like a real wave. Wow. So, so that, that, that'd be a little bit of shock for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, so when it's, when it's, when there's surf, you, you have to make sure you're on it. Right? Yeah. It's, you just have to try and forecast it right and, and clear your schedule and, and go. Um, but like yeah, I said, out there all day. Yeah. So through those winter and, and spring months, you can plan to serve two, three times a week for sure. You know what, what those days will be, you know, what day of the week they will be, who knows, but um, you know, it's, it's pretty inconsistent, but at times it, it, it can be, it can be pretty predictable as well. What are, what are some pros and cons of surfing in Texas? Oh um, man. I mean, I just kind of, I just kind of said it right there. Just the unpredictability, I, yeah. like that's the con. Yeah. But also a pro, it makes you really appreciate when you do get good surf. Like there's yeah. nothing better than getting good surf at home. Um, be- I feel like having like, so for us, let's just talk about crowd for a second. And yeah. I'm not trying to get everybody to go move to Texas and say, go surf, but I go surf lowers and there's like 200 guys out. Right. right. You go to Texas on like the best day ever. And I'm sure there's not 200 guys out somewhere. No, nope. like, not everybody surfs. And so that's a huge pro in itself. And we talked about, you said 30 guys out sometimes max. And like to right. me, when I think about 30 guys out, I'm like, dude, I wish I knew, all, knew them all because that would be so much fun. That's yeah. like surfing with, for me out front of my place. Like there's 30 guys out at all times. And it's fun to me because I know all the people and I'm like, that's oh, cool. this yeah. is rad. But at the same time, sometimes I'm like, gosh, I wish there were only like 10 guys out. Sure. But <laughs> you guys have that, that pro, right? Like that's amazing. Yeah, no, it it is fun. And, and with, you know, in Gal, I'm in Galveston. So Houston is just an hour away. So yeah. when, when you have a city that size with millions of people, um, you definitely have a, a solid surf community. Um, it's not as big as, you know, as, as other spots around the nation, but it's probably bigger than, than you would think. Um, really? And just spread out like, like there, there's Galveston and then about a 45 minutes South, there's another, popular beach called Surfside. And so between these two beaches, everybody's kind of split up. Um, cause the, the, probably the bulk of surfers don't live in Galveston where I'm at. They all kind of commute in, um, and kind of go from there. So, and then you kind of go down 200 miles and there's Corpus Christi and Corpus Christi is a good size city and it's like, it's close to the beach. Um, so they have some really good crowds down there. I hear I'm, I'm not down there as much as I'd like, but uh, and then you drive another three hours south, and there's South Padre Island. And I guess I guess that's a good question for you. How often are you driving for surf? Like, and driving when I mean driving, I mean like you're going 45 miles, like whatever, an hour away. Not as much these days. With with I've got two <laughs> kids and a job, yeah. and uh, unless they're surf on a weekend, I'm not chasing it too much. So, yeah, totally. Un, so but I do the kind of the local surf contests um, schedule around here. So that gives you a good excuse to get out of town, uh, <laughs> go to Corpus for the weekend, go to South Padre, Port Aransas, wherever it might be, um, uh, link up with your buddies down there. And, and you know, there's gonna be surf contest is on. So, uh, Epic. these days that's about all, that's about all the chasing I do. Unless a storm swell comes in, if there's a hurricane coming into the Gulf, you can really kind of plan that out as well. That yeah. It's easier. That sounds epic. It's such such a fun thing, just doing strike little strike adventures, yeah. right? Like you're like, even if it's 
a couple hours away. You just get there and you're like, you, you feel like you're on a staycation in a way, but you're getting better waves or you're tracking that swell and you're just surfing with whatever, one of your buddies. And you're just like, wow, this is really cool. That's something that I love. So it, exactly. So during the kind of those fall and winter months, we've got a spot about two hours South and that's when it just turns on. So that's, I, I, I do make that trip quite a bit during those months because it's only two hours away. You get up early, you go surf for, you know, several hours and then you're home in the evening. So, yeah, um, and that's, that, that's kind of one of those untouched beaches. So the waves are more punchy. You can drive down on the beach and uh, it's a blast. Perfect. I want to go surf there with you. Come on, <laughs> let's go. So, so describe to me like the culture and the community there in Texas for, for that like scene, surf scene. It's, it's a really friendly community, right? Because, you know. Texas surfers, you really have to be dedicated to be a Texas surfer. You, you truly do, right? It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get used to not surfing at times. You know, you kind of you get into your routine. You're like, ah, there's kind of some waves, but I can do this instead. Um, so in that regard, the community is, is, is really cool. So everybody's kind of comes together. You know, everybody kind of follows the surf. And, um, you know, you can always depend on seeing your buddies at the beach when you don't see them very much, you know, in, in your typical day-to-day -day life. Um, it's, you can always count on that. You know, if you haven't seen them in a month, Hey, the surf's going to be up. I'm, I'm going to go see my buddies. But um, like I said, we have a good size surf community even, and it's probably bigger than a, than a lot of people would think. You were talking about contests and stuff. Do you guys have local events there where you live and up and down the coast? We do. So uh, the Texas Gulf Surfing Association, we probably have five to seven events a, a season. And so we awesome. kind of touch each kind of hot spot there. So you have Galveston, Surfside, Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, South Padre Island. And so each one of those spots is like four hours from each other. So you're covering a lot of ground. Um, and then we even snuck in a couple events at the uh, Waco Surf uh, oh yeah past season two yeah we had an event in that place November. is so fun yeah and we just had one in uh, memorial day weekend so water was warm it was it was it's you know when you get to bring everybody to waco to go surfing uh, yeah. away from the coast uh and surf good waves that was that was a lot of fun so are you involved in a lot of events around there in texas I'm involved in as many as I can get into. So I do that kind of little tour, the little schedule. Yeah. There's a couple other like specialty events that come in. Like the, we just did, it's called the La Izquierda. It's a, mm. like a surf and music fest. Oh, rad. So it's a longboard surf contest out front. And then behind you across the street is there's music playing all day, live bands, uh, you know, vendors, and they make a weekend of it. And, uh, and first prize this year was a trip to Nicaragua. So what? That was pretty rad. Yeah. And I ended up winning. So Dude, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, that's was, so good. It was rad. Everybody was stoked. <laughs> so, so dude, that's awesome. I think that those events are awesome because you're bringing the community together. It's a lot like here. We have the Switchfoot Bro Am, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people on the beach listening yeah. to music, doing a surf contest. Um, they have a foamy division. They have an actual contest. They have a switch surfing contest. Like they have all this stuff that's so much fun and it brings the community yeah. together. How big are those events for your community? They're huge. Like they're bigger than like our typical little, you know, TGSA events, right? Cause yeah. you have, you have the community show up who don't usually do contest surfing and stuff like that, but they'll come totally. out for an event like that because it's, you know, it's something different. It's, it's entertainment. It's for a good cause. And, um, those events are huge. I look forward to those all year long. Those are my favorite. Totally, yeah. How what does it impact the community in a different way of like teaching them, hey, this is what sur the surf industry is about. This is the surf community and does it involve them enough to make them want to come surf, do you think? It does. It does. Um, you know, I end up seeing a lot of these families that my kids go to school with. And I had no idea that, you know, that their dad surfed a little bit here and there too. And now yeah. the kids are at the beach and they're all surfing together and it just really promotes that and just kind of fuels each other's fire. Um, 
but yeah, in, any good excuse to get all those families together and, and create those bonds, that's, that's what it's all about. I love that. That's so rad. What kind of divisions do you have for uh, the community over there for the contest? Oh, man. So, I mean, in that division, it was pretty limited. It was just like men's, women's, and groms. Yeah. You know, in your typical division, in, in your typical contest, there's, you know, there's age groups every whatever. It's all your typical age group. From many hoonies up to like grand legends, you know. <laughs> and you've got, so rad. and they're all full, you know. They're all, you have guys who are in their, who are 70 years old still doing events. And uh, my dad still does them. He's like 60. Two sixty three, he's he's the biggest Grom still. So, I love that. Yeah, that's so sick. And then we had like Red Bull come into town recently, and they oh, do their. Oh yeah, foam. I was gonna ask you. Yeah, the foam wreckers. That one's killer. So they did their first one a couple years ago at Waco Surf, which was a lot of fun, just on a on a foam board. And then this year they came to Galveston, which was nice. It was local. Um, there was barely a wave, but they still pulled it off, and. Uh, I was lucky enough in the final to, to you know, cause you spin the wheel and whatever it falls on, that's, you know, what that, you ride, right? That's the board you ride, you know, they've got like five <laughs> options there. So you just hoping not to get the, the Whomper or something or the boogie. Um, yeah. Luckily I got the log and it was knee high. And I luckily enough won, won that event too. And I was Dude. like, that was like in November, but uh, you're the kid. You're the king over there. It's been a good season. Yeah. It's been a good season. <laughs> I love it. Dude, how good of an event is that for the community? Because that, I think the what Red Bull does there, the Foam Wreckers, is so rad, dude. Like, Van Gravy and Jamie have done such a good job with that because it ev involves everyone. You don't have to just surf. You can bodyboard. You can body surf. You can uh, ride foamies. You can ride shortboards. You can ride anything and be involved in that event. So right. a community like you um, with people that, maybe aren't super involved in surfing, but want yeah. to be involved, they can go sign up and do that. No, there were, there were people there. I had no idea. I'd never seen them before in my life. They, they, totally. but they show up and enter and it's all of, it's like the anti surf contest is kind of what they, what yeah. they say. Cause it's all about, yeah. you can hit the worst ride, but do something, you know, j jump on your back and, and do something crazy and get a good score. You know, it's, that is amazing. Yeah. I love that. And it, it is kind of the anti-surf contest. And I think that's really, really good to show a community like where you live in Texas, where it's not the surfing mecca of the world. Right. You know, let's right. let's go show the community what surfing's all about. It's about having fun and teaching and wanting to help others and push them into waves and get people good waves. And when the waves are firing, let's get everybody out there and yeah. push each other to get better. You nailed it. You nailed it. hundred percent. It's so epic. It's so fun. I want. So I really want to experience that. I want to experience what what your guys' community is like and like the culture of that compared to like where I live. Where if you don't have a sticker on your board, why are you surfing? You know what I mean? Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not quite that bad here. The only difference I love coming to California because there is like a surf culture though. Just yeah. Like a, just overall, you you feel you feel like a surfer walking around. Here, you're kind of a little more of like a outcast outcast right you <laughs> so right hey, yes and you surf there's waves what you're like yeah we, we get surf you live here you you don't drive down the beach and, and check it out sometimes but even people who live here are surprised that you're a surfer you know that's yeah. how that's how odd of a of a coastline it is i guess do you guys have um like surf camps and events like that we do we do. So my, my buddy Morgan, he runs a Texas surf camps down in the Port Aransas Corpus area, and he's been doing it for ages. Um, there's some surf shops up this way that'll do a camp um, from perfect. here and there. And there's, there's, you know, there's places in South Padre that do them too. So each, yeah, each kind of spot has like a, somebody running some surf camps. What about like surf shops and stuff? Do you guys have a lot of shops around there? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got like three or four on the Island here. Um, which is tough, you know, they, you know, they, they, they're trying to survive off of, you know, in the, the, those dead seasons are pretty dead, you know, Galveston is yeah. a really seasonal town because it, it is an island and it feeds off of tourism. Um, but we have a few, uh, shops here in town and then there's in Houston as well. There's a couple shops too. So, um, and there, there's, there's some shops that have been around for 20 to 30 years. Um, 
surf specialties here, Southern Spears, Ohana. So there's, yeah, there's some good spots in Galveston. How many, how many people in Galveston do you think surf? Oh man, that's tough. In Galveston, there's a lot. It, man, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, could you say, would you say you know like 90 or 100% of those people though? Most of them, yeah. Yeah. That is most so them, sick. Yeah, most of them. That's sure. so fun. And it's cool because now, now my buddies, kids are starting to surf, you know, and they're yeah. you know, young teenagers and they're kind of starting to get their little crew to go out. And, totally. Um, it's, and then guys that I always watched growing up surfing they're still they're still going at it some guys don't surf anymore they just fish you know so you, you kind of see them fishing instead of surfing these days but um i don't know how many like from galveston probably a hundred or less um like i said Crazy. a lot of people come from the houston area and i don't know as many of those people because they may not get down here as often but um but still yeah we, we definitely know a chunk yeah um, of the population what events do you have coming up? Anything? Man, nothing is really on the books right now. This is kind of the, the, the dead zone of the of the year. Uh, yeah. So the contest season starts back up September, October. Um, and that'll run kind of through the following May. Hopefully we'll get another Waco surf contest on the books. Yeah. Uh, and I need to use that Nicaragua trip too. So I need to. I need yeah. To when is that? I just need to book it. It's kind of like a, it's like a six night stay at a surf lodge. And, uh, so it's just a matter of seeing what, what's available and what, when I can do it. So how epic is that? It's time to jump on that. Yeah. Is it just you or can you bring someone? It's for two. Yeah. Dude, what? Yeah. You're going to bring one of the Galveston guys? Oh man. Uh, she, they're gonna have to fight my wife for it for sure oh <laughs> what? that would be that would be so fun though to bring the community and just be like hey whoever wants to get in on this trip let's go that's true yeah hey i'm going this week book it let's go yeah i'll be there is there is there a lot of people um that live around you that have only surfed in texas uh there's probably a good chunk but growing up here you always can't wait to kind of go elsewhere to find waves too so totally um just to go experience a better wave and um i mean surfing in general gives you a good excuse to go to some pretty cool places around the world so absolutely uh, yeah it's i tell you what it's a when you grow up surfing you know kind of marginal surf uh, it's a lot easier to surf a, a good wave than it is a bad wave so yeah when when we do kind of travel it's just kind of like oh this is a whole new world this is this is a lot totally. easier i don't have to create my own speed yeah yeah, it makes you a lot better of a surfer, right? It does. It really does. So we, we ride like a variety of boards here, you know, so a, a, a lot of twin fins, you know, wider nose boards, some long boards, you know, as well as your kind of typical short boards too on the, on a on a typical day, you know, on a good day. On a, yeah. So I've, yeah. I've, I've got a little bit of everything sitting in the garage right now. <laughs> That's so epic. Mm-hmm. Rad, dude. Well, I was stoked to talk to you about this. It's been a fun combo. I, I think it's a very unique and different way of surfing over there. And, and to be able to talk about the community and what, what it's becoming is super rad. Yeah. You know, we have almost like 400 miles of coastline in Texas. So there's a yeah. lot of surf to be had here. Um, and typically, so I'm, I'm up kind of the coast kind of curves like that. I'm up this way yep. in Galveston and the further South you go, typically the better this, the surf gets as well. So just a little deeper water, uh, that shelf kind of gets off the coast there, deeper water. Um, and depending where that beach is facing, you'll, you'll pick yep. up, you know, different swells a little better, just like anywhere else. But it's just a matter of d doing your research, knowing, you know, I think we're all kind of part-time weather, like kind of <laughs> weather forecasters. Right. And we <laughs> totally. see what that's going to turn into waves and, um, so just surfing in general, just gives you a, a great perspective all around. Absolutely. We're going to, we're going to see you in Texas, hopefully soon, either Texas or Florida. I got to get out of the, out of the California, um, busyness for a little bit. Well, <laughs> Florida, Florida, Florida reminds me a lot of Texas, just kind of the coastline and the, the, yeah. the people and, and the fishing and, and things like that. But Florida just gets a little more surf than we do. So that yeah. may be something to look at. There you go. Rad Chris, well, thanks for hopping on and thanks everybody for listening in. We'll catch you next time on Above and Below. All right, cheers. Cheers.